My name is Jonathan Leek. I'm going to be talking about sampling matrices from HCIZ's densities with applications to quantum inference and differential privacy. This is joint work with Colin McSwiggan and Nishith Vishnoy. Before talking about the general problem we solve, we'll look at a few motivating examples. The first being that of quantum inference. The problem is stated simply as follows. Given a trace one positive semi-definite matrix A, which is called a density matrix, we want to infer a rank one PSD projection from A in a sensible way. One option for doing this is to sample from a well-chosen probability distribution on the set of rank one PSD projections. One principled way to select such a distribution is via the maximum entropy principle. The idea is to choose the distribution on the set of rank one PSD projections with expectation A, which maximizes entropy, or rather minimizes the differential entropy to the uniform distribution. The way this looks is given by the following picture, where you're in fact optimizing relative entropy with respect to some base measure mu on M. Um, and if you look at this, this is gonna be the expectation constraint here. And this is the constraint which forces mu to be a probability distribution. The main issue with this approach is that while this optimization problem is convex, it's also infinite dimensional. We are actually op trying to optimize over all distributions on the set of rank one projections. It turns out though that the dual convex program is actually finite dimensional. And by strong duality, solving the dual program gives us a solution to the primal program as well. Further, strong duality implies uh, that the optimal distribution has a log linear density function uh, as given here. And here the inner product and the exponent is the Frobenius inner product on matrices. Now the computability of this dual program has been studied in previous work and uh, we will not discuss it further here. This then leaves open the question of efficient sampling. Suppose we have the optimal matrix Y star. Can we sample from the distribution nu star on the set of rank one projections? We last note here that while the set of density matrix matrices is a convex set, the set of rank one projections lies on the boundary of the set of density matrices and hence is not convex. Sampling from non-convex manifolds is in general a much harder problem than sampling from convex sets. And so we'll need to figure out how to handle this sort of situation. Um, let's look at another motivating example, the problem of differentially private low rank approximation. In the low rank approximation problem, uh, you're given a PSD matrix Y, and you want to output a rank K PSD projection P, which maximizes the inner product between Y and P. While this problem can be solved by simply computing the eigenpairs of Y, choosing the projection out of the top K eigenvectors, uh, it's sometimes desirable to solve it in a differentially private manner. Um, a, a motivating example for low rank approximation, uh, at least in a differentially private way, is the so-called Netflix challenge. Uh, in, in that, user preference data is stored as vectors, and, and a large preference covariance matrix is computed to try to make predictions um, about users' preferences. Um, the low rank approximation problem then serves to try to cut out noise of spurious correlations. Um, and uh, while a, while a neat challenge, uh, unfortunately, this uh, Netflix challenge ended due to the privacy breaches caused by user data, data that was obtained through these approximation matrices. So a principal approach to the problem of differential privacy in general is given by the exponential mechanism introduced by McSherry and Talwar in 2013. Um, the general idea here is to sample from an exponential density on the given support set. In the case of rank K approximation, the support is PK, uh, which defines the uh, set of rank K PSD projections. In the case that the support set is a convex set, it's well defined what it means to sample from the exponential density function. But in the case that the support set is a non-convex manifold, like PK, the notion of sampling from a density becomes less clear. Uh, one needs a base measure on the manifold. And in the case of PK, the natural choice is the unitarily invariant measure. Uh, but with, with that said, uh, the question then becomes, how do we efficiently sample from this exponential density? Okay. And to the best of our knowledge, the most that has been known thus far about this is a polynomial time algorithm in the rank one case. Um, and the problem of extending this to the rank K case for K greater than one is actually open. Okay. So we now note some connections between these two motivating examples we just went over. First note that the support sets of these two examples are both manifolds, which are invariant under conjugation by a unitary matrix. That is, conjugating a rank K PSD projection by a unitary matrix gives another rank K PSD projection. 
Thus, the set of rank K projections for any fixed K is invariant under unitary conjugation. Another way to say this is to say that these support sets are unitary orbits. And in fact, one can associate such a unitary orbit to any Hermitian matrix lambda. This orbit O lambda um, is then precisely the set of Hermitian matrices with the same eigenvalues as lambda. And from this interpretation, we also obtain a natural measure on the orbit O lambda, which is invariant under the conjugation action. In fact, this measure is derived from the Haar measure on the unitary group. And uh, one should also think of this measure as as sort of the uniform measure uh, on the non-convex manifold O lambda. Okay, and with this then, our, our two motivating problems then fit into a single context. Given Hermitian matrices lambda and y, we want to be able to uh, efficiently sample from the, the stated exponential density given here on the orbit um, with respect to the uniform base measure. And now let's briefly switch gears to a different sampling problem on the unitary group. Uh, it's, instead of using lambda to define the orbit O lambda, we consider the problem of sampling from the group of unitary matrices itself with exponential density function given by e to the trace y u lambda u star as, uh, as displayed here. Uh, such densities are called Harris Chandra Itzikson Zuber densities, or HCIZ densities for short. And these three guys are over here in these pictures. Uh, they are uh, important objects in physics, random matrix theory, and have been well studied since the work of Harris Chandra in the 50s. Um, so given this, this different problem and the, the problem of sampling from unitary orbits above, observe that by plugging in u lambda u star in for x, these two problems actually become equivalent. That is, sampling a matrix from the unitary orbit O lambda can be made equivalent to sampling a unitary matrix and then conjugating lambda by that unitary matrix. And this leads then to, to the most general sampling question. Given a Y and now also a lambda, can we efficiently sample from the, these HCIZ densities or the orbital densities? These are being equivalent. And the answer is yes. We can efficiently approximately sample from the exponential density on the orbit O lambda. To the best of our knowledge, the only prior results that were known for this problem is in the real rank one case, where real here means that the real orthogonal matrix conjugation is considered instead of unitary matrix con conjugation. In fact, we have two versions of the main result, which differ in terms of the metric used for approximation and in terms of the running time. Um, and note that the two metrics that, that we use here are, are defined on this box on the right, in case you are not familiar. Um, the first version approximately samples with total variation distance error. And the number of operations required depends polynomially on log of one over the error. On the other hand, the second version uh, approximately samples with infinity divergence error. And the number of operations depends polynomially on one over the error. And uh, as, as noted there, um, it's the second version, which is actually used for the differential privacy result. Uh, it should, should be noted that the infinity divergence gives a strictly stronger notion of approximation than that of total variation. But the drawback is that the number of operations required has worse dependence on the error for version two. We leave it as an open question to be able to strengthen version two so that the number of operations required depends polynomially on log one over the error instead of one over the error. Our results then give efficient approximate uh, sampling algorithms for a number of distributions, including HCIZ densities, uh, and also including both of our motivating examples, the max entropy distributions and the differentially private low rank approximation. And finally, also for complex matrix Langevin distributions. Um, and for the case of differentially private low rank approximation for k greater than one, uh, we obtain the stated utility bound here. And um, uh, this is optimal uh, up to lower order terms. OK. Now we move on to the overview of the proof of our main results. So first recall, recall our, our goal. Given Hermitian matrices y and lambda, we want to sample from this exponential distribution on the orbit of O lambda, this exponential distribution here. 
So let's look at the simplest case first when y equals zero. In this case, we simply want the sample from the uniform distribution on the orbit O lambda. And this is equivalent to conjugating lambda by a uniformly random unitary matrix. This is the equivalence between uh, sampling from unitary orbits and sampling from HCIZ densities that we mentioned before. Uh, we can sample a unitary matrix uniformly by simply sampling random Gaussian vectors and then orth orthogonalizing. Um, for instance, one could use Gram-Schmidt to do this. We then take these uh, orthonormal vectors and we form a unitary matrix out of them, using them as the columns. And then we conjugate lambda by this, by this matrix we formed, and that gives us a sample from the orbit O lambda. Uh, but while we have a simple solution for this first case, we run into obstacles when trying to, to, try to generalize this. Um, the first thing is when y is not equal to zero, uh, the exponential density is no longer constant. And this immediately breaks down the simpler algorithm in the, in the, in the y equals zero case. Uh, we pretty much can't go, can't do anything at all of what we did before. Um, and so to avoid this issue, uh, one might attempt to do something like some kind of entry by entry approach, uh, where you sample each entry, um, and then you sample uh, the next entry conditioned on the previous entry um, and, until you've sampled all the entries of the matrix. The problem with this is that there are, uh, high correlations between the entries of the matrix in this orbit, as it is uh, this as a manifold, a non-convex manifold. And it trying to do this will be a very complicated approach. OK, but then this brings up a, 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 a better idea. Um, so instead of considering the matrices in terms of their entries, uh, let's try to consider the matrices in terms of their eigenvalues. And at first, maybe this doesn't seem to help much uh, because these orbits are defined to be sets of matrices with the same eigenvalues. That's how they were defined. But if, but if we actually look at the eigenvalues, not just of the matrix, but of all leading principal minors, then we can gain extra information. And as it turns out, the eigenvalues of all the leading principal minors essentially determine the eigenvectors of the matrix, and thus the matrix itself. Um, and we'll, we'll see more about that later. Um, and over here now on the right, um, I've, I've depicted here uh, the, this map from the matrix itself to its um, list of eigenvalues of the principal minors. And the name of this map is the Rayleigh map. Um, and the point, uh, sorry, a point in the image of the Rayleigh map is then a collection of lists of eigenvalues formed into a triangle as in the picture uh, with eigenvalues listed in descending order as they are there. Uh, and to see how this information determines the eigenvectors of the matrix, we'll need to investigate this Rayleigh map further. OK, so to do this, let's look at a seemingly simple example, the case of rank one projections. Here, the orbit we study is this OE1, um, which is all unitary conjugations of the matrix E1. Uh, and E1's written there. It's just a one in the top left corner, zeros elsewhere. Okay, now let's look at what happens when we apply the Rayleigh map to some rank one projection X in this orbit. Since X is rank one, then all of its principal minors are rank at most one. And thus each minor has at most one non-zero eigenvalue. And further, by the Cauchy interlacing theorem, um, these non-zero eigenvalues are actually decreasing as the minor gets smaller. And by the simple uh, linear transformation given here, just taking successive differences, um, this, in fact, shows that the image of this orbit, um, the orbit of rank one projections under the Rayleigh map, is actually a simplex. Um, since these are decreasing and the max one is one, then the sum of these things will be one and they will all be positive. And that is that the Rayleigh map maps a non convex manifold to a convex polytope. That is, the, the set of rank one projections maps under the Rayleigh map to the simplex. And so then, what about the general case beyond rank one projections? And further, what can we say about the Rayleigh, how the Rayleigh map projects the exponential density onto the simplex or onto its image more, more generally? OK, so the first thing that we can easily generalize is the use of Cauchy's interlacing theorem. In fact, the theorem says in general that the eigenvalues of a principal minor of a matrix interlace the eigenvalues of that matrix, giving the uh, set of inequalities described here. And in fact, if, if, you, if you write these down for all i and j, that's just saying that the successive principal minors 
the eigenvalues interlace each other. Uh, and combining all these interlacing relations together, you get some finite set of inequalities, and that finite set cuts out a polytope. And as a matter of fact, it turns out that these inequalities cut off the whole image of the Rayleigh map, meaning that the Rayleigh map maps any orbit O lambda onto a convex polytope, which is called the gelfand setlin polytope, or GT polytope for short. And more than that, the Rayleigh map actually projects the uniform measure on the orbit to the uniform measure on the GT polytope. And it also takes exponential densities on the orbit over to exponential densities on the GT polytope. Now, the Rayleigh map is not injective. And so its, it's fibers, which are inverse images of single points, are actually made up of potentially many points in the orbit. Uh, and what will be crucial to our sampling algorithm is the fact that the exponential density on the orbit is actually always constant on these fibers. And we'll see that at play later. OK, now with these facts at hand, in hand, we can now describe the two main steps of our sampling algorithm. OK, so since the de exponential density on the orbit maps to an exponential density on the GT polytope through the Rayleigh map, the first thing we'll do is we'll just sample a point from the GT polytope according to that exponential density. OK, once we have that point, we can then convert it into an element of the orbit by sampling a matrix from the fiber of that point under the Rayleigh map. And since the exponential density is constant on the fiber, like I just said, we just need to be able to sample uniformly from this fiber. OK, and step one of this algorithm, um, so there's, there's step one and step two. I'll talk about step one here, and then step two will be the next slide. For step one of this algorithm, we appeal to two known algorithms for sampling from log concave densities on convex polytopes. The first algorithm approximately samples according to the exponential on the GT polytope in terms of total variation distance. And this algorithm requires uh, operations, which is, sorry, Oracle calls polynomial in log one over uh, the error. Uh, the second algorithm then approximately samples in terms of the infinity divergence and requires um, Oracle calls, which, which depend polynomially on one over the error. And if you remember the difference in, in complexity and, and approximation metric, from the main theorem, uh, this, these two algorithms are precisely the reason why we had those two different versions. This is exactly where those differences come out. OK, so to, to handle step one, we just appeal to, to, to previously uh, developed algorithms. And for step two, we need to do a bit more. OK, so for step two of the algorithm, we must convert our sample r from the GT polytope into a sample from the orbit. And as discussed before, what will allow us to do this is the fact that the exponential density is constant on the fibers of the Rayleigh map. So we just need to be able to sample uniformly from the fiber of our point R. Okay, Our algorithm then proceeds by building up a matrix in our orbit O lambda, uh, sort of one leading principal minor at a time. So we start with uh, the 1, 1 entry of our matrix, which is just given by R11, a point, uh, sorry, an entry of our point R. And then we inductively add a new row and a new column to our matrix at every step. Um, and while the diagonal element of this new matrix here uh, will be determined directly from the entries of our point R in the GT polytope, the vector V is not completely determined. Um, but actually, vector, the vector V will come from a product of spheres. And so since we just need to sample uh, uniformly, we can sample V by just uh, uniformly sampling elements of these spheres. OK, but that, that sounds great. But, um, but why is this true? Why, why does the vector v come from a product of spheres? What, what, uh, how do we know this? So the reason for this is clearest when the matrix xk is diagonal. So we're going to assume this. Um, the general case then follows by conjugating by an appropriate unitary matrix. OK, so if xk is diagonal, um, well, well, we know that the eigenvalues of xk and uh, xk plus 1 um, come from our point R. They, they, they're given to us. They're entries of the point R in the GT polytope. And because of that, we can compute the characteristic polynomial of xk plus 1 in two different ways. Uh, once in terms of its eigenvalues, just a, just a product of linears, and another by expanding along the last row and the last column of the matrix. And so that will give us some expression in terms of the eigenvalues of xk. 
Setting these two expressions equal then gives a nice expression for vj, or at least its absolute value. And in fact, this determines its value of the sign. Um, it turns out this is essentially equivalent to determining the eigenvectors of the final sample matrix that we're at the end, we get uh, this element of the orbit. Uh, and this is, this is what was mentioned uh, near the beginning of the proof overview. Anyway, with this, we can, we can then, in order to sample VJ, um, we just need to sample VJ uniformly from the complex circle of uh, radius given by the absolute value of VJ. OK, and, and there are a few potential issues here uh, that are mentioned, um, but, but they are actually easily handleable. handleable. Um, in fact, the, the case of non-distinct eigenvalues is exactly what causes the vector V to come from a product of spheres, which was mentioned before. Uh, rather than simply a torus, which is exactly uh, what we described here. And finally, this part of the algorithm preserves approximation error, uh, which means that the approximation error from the polytope sampling part of things um, just directly transfers back to the orbit. So we don't have to worry about any extra error here. OK, now let's conclude. The main result of this talk was an efficient algorithm for approximate sampling from orbital and HCIZ densities. Uh, this result yields many applications. We specifically discussed the application to quantum inference via sampling from max entropy distributions, as well as the application to differentially private low rank approximation. So, um, and we leave with two open problems. Uh, the first is whether one can improve the one over error dependence to a log one over error dependence in the infinity divergence approximation result. Uh, since infinity divergence is a stronger notion, this would eliminate the need for two separate theorems and also pro provide improved running times for differentially private low rank approximation. The second open problem is whether one can use our techniques to handle the case of real, real orthogonal matrix orbits instead of complex. Um, and this is an important question in the area of directional statistics. Uh, the issue there is in the real case, the Rayleigh map does not project the uniform measure on the orbit to the uniform measure on the polytope. And this makes our techniques inapplicable. And finally, the overarching idea of this paper is that hidden or underlying symmetries can be useful in designing efficient sampling and optimization algorithms over non-convex non -convex manifolds. Uh, and we're hopeful that this overarching idea, idea will lead to new results in the future. Thanks for listening.